Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn, everything about the APS 650, Materials and Thickness Limitation. Our flagship courses are, Master Static Equipment Design, and PVE Light, ASME Section 8 Division 2, and Master Welded Storage Tank, as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform for more details on scutoid.thinkific.com. Under tolerance, if you are reading about the requirements related to material. So first is plate. So whenever you are procuring plate, uh, under tolerance 0.3 mm, which is same as ASME, that is permitted. Now this is very much important. In ASME, there is no limit of the higher thickness. Okay, we can use whatever is possible to make. Here, a big limitation. Shell plates are limited to maximum thickness of 45. You cannot use more than 45 mm thickness. It's a big point, isn't it? The thickness cannot be higher than 45 mm. Make sense? Okay. Now for different material, it's different. So we'll talk about the different materials also. So this limit is not common for all of them. So next clause mentions what are the ASTM specifications which are permitted. Now why not ASME, why is writing ASTM specification? What is the logic of having ASTM specifications? Why not ASME? Because you might be used to following ASME specifications. Why ASTM? ASTM is specifically for materials. ASME basically adopted ASTM. Okay. It's uh, even to and fro. Some ASME uh, specifications were adopted by ASTM and some ASTM specifications are adopted by ASME. Okay. There was a time when both of the organizations, ASME and ASTM, were working in parallel. Both organizations existed and they were working on the same type of specification. Then it was realized that it's just a waste of time. Okay. So they collaborated. So ASTM and ASME collaborated and exchanged specifications. Okay. So ASME specifications are meant for pressure vessels, very specific to pressure vessels. While ASTM deals with all kinds of material, all the different kinds of material you can find. It deals with everything. So here, API is a separate organization. Okay. So API is adopting the ASTM, which is the material organization. So it's the main parent organization you can consider for materials. So API is following the parent organization for the material. So first specifications, which is there for tanks is ASME, ASTM 36, A36. A36, we very rarely use in pressure vessel. Okay. But this is a very common material for the tank fabrication. Like 516 grade 70 becomes a default material for a pressure vessel. A36 is a default material for a storage tank. Make sense? So by default, you'll start with A36 and then you may, if client has mentioned something, definitely you'll take that. But this is the by default starting material. If you are following A36, then your thickness will be limited to only 40 mm. The maximum limit is 45. But if you are following A36, you will be limited to 40 mm thickness only. One thirty one, very rarely we use. Two eighty three is again a common material. But not definitely as E36, but it is also very common tag material. Okay. But if you are following this, it is limited only to 25 mm. Okay. So only 25 mm, if your thickness, maximum thickness is 25 mm, then only you can follow. If it is exceeding, then you have to change the material. For 516, for different grades, the maximum limit is again 40 mm. Okay. For 516 also you are not allowed to exceed 40 mm. Okay. Now you can see 537. It's a very high strength material compared to others. 
So class one and class two, if you are following this material, then you can go up to 45. So this is again a common material for high strength. When your thickness is exceeding, very high thickness you are working, then by using 537, you can reduce some of the thicknesses. Okay? The total tonnage can be reduced. So these are the common materials A36, 283, 516, and 537. And in the same uh, sequence, apart from 283, like uh, if you want, you can start with 283. Then the second preference will be A36 because it is limited to only 25 ml. Now, some places A36 will be having lower cost than 283 okay, because of the wide availability. So that time it makes sense to follow A36 rather than 283. Third will be 516. And the fourth is 537. Uh, it's mainly it's limited to 40 mm. But only for 537, considering it's a high strength, you are allowed to go a little bit higher. Okay. 283 is not considered very good material. So for high stresses, tanks, you are not preferring that okay, compared to others. So better the material, you are allowing a better thickness or more thickness for that. That is the logic which is following. So some CSA, this is Canadian specification. ISO, okay, so ISO material which is permitted. Okay. So these are the grades, okay, which 275 and 355. Okay. EN specifications, European, then some national standards. Okay, like you might be, if you are from India, you know that we most of the time follow IS standard okay, for tags because that is much cheaper compared to other ASME, AST, ASME or ASTM materials. So IS becomes a problem. So that also is permitted. So you can use. So it has to be uh, meeting the requirements of either one which is mentioned earlier. So if it's IS standard and you are able to uh, make it similar to ISO specifications, in IS standard, you'll find that it is always referred to the ISO standard also. Okay. So that way it becomes easily you can interchange. it. You don't have to do any additional work. Okay, otherwise, if it is not listed or it is not similar to any material, uh, it's not written in that specification, then you have to do all the testing and compare that with a allowable material which is there in that code or standard, then only you can use. So, a reference is very much helpful for us. Now, heat treatment. Most of the time, you won't require heat treatment only when uh, when specified by the purchaser, Okay, when your thickness is exceeding. So there is no hard and fast thickness limit given as we have in ASME. But it's saying that when specified by the plate purchaser, fully killed, killed plates, fully killed means by removing all the oxygen okay, shall be heat treated to produce the green refinement by normalized okay so now it will be only required when the client is specified otherwise it won't become applicable so most of the time you won't find this heat treatments moving forward impact testing so impact testing is also pretty simple uh first you will be using this curve of asme so now how we refer that based on the thickness okay like let's consider my thickness is 20 mm so i'll draw a line at 20 mm now there are different groups of material there is a grouping how you'll find the grouping we'll see in api also the grouping is given so you have to follow api grouping not a seeming group okay so let us see my material falls into group six in that case this is the line and here there is an intersection so i'll move like this then this point will become my 
MDMT for the material to be used. What is the value which we'll be getting here? Roughly minus 32. So now uh, we need to understand which materials fall in, falls into which group. Okay, that is important to get the MDMT values. Okay, so now let us see the grouping part. This is the grouping of material. Okay. So group one, as rolled or semi killed. What are those materials? You have 283 and 36. A36. Okay. Both are falls into group one. Okay. Now both can fall into group two also. So now there is a note which you have to refer, like A36. There is note three and note five. Okay. Now let us read that. For thickness less or equal to 20, it will be falling into group 1. What is note 5? Talking about the manganese content. Okay, So some chemical analysis and for thickness greater than 20. So if it is meeting this requirement, then you will be falling into group 2 for A36. Okay. 5 and 6, 380. Then you have a 5, 1, 6, 3, 80 again for different note. And here 5, 5, 1, 6, grade 70, which is 485, which is the very common material which we use for pressure vessel that falls into group 4. 537, which is the highest thickness that falls into group 6. What is 485? It's a tensile strength, right? Uh, you remember writing, most of you might be remembering SA516, grade 70, we write, right? So 70 is nothing but tensile strength in KSI. If you convert in MPA, it becomes 485 MPA. Okay, that is the difference. Make sense? Yes. So that is 485. So sometimes you write in KSI, sometimes you write in MP also. Writing KSI is the mainly practice which is followed. Very rarely you will find written in MPA, but that is also acceptable. Okay, so these are the grouping. So first you will see your material falls into which group and then you can follow the graph and find the MDMT value. So you have UCS graph also and you have SI graph also. So follow the graph which is applicable for you. Whatever design, like if you're doing in SI unit, follow this. So you have like group 4, 5 and 6 or group 1 if you are following for 20 mm thick. If you are following group 1, then for 20 mm plate, your MDMT value will become roughly what? If 20 mm thick plate you are using and your material is A36, then your MDMT will be 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. So below that, if you want to use, can I use below that? Can I use the A36 material of 20 mm thick at, let us say, minus 10 degrees Celsius? Can I use it? So can I use it at minus 10? If my MDMT value, like I calculated for 20 mm, it came 2 degrees Celsius. Can I use A36 of 20 mm at 10 degrees Celsius? If I want to use it, first of all, the answer is yes. Simple, right? If MDMT is not getting qualified, how, what you do in ASME also? Impact testing, right? We perform impact testing and check whether it can take that much, uh, it's still ductile or brittle. We can check that. Right, impact testing, uh, same like 
A20, which is followed, which is a general specification for even 516 and also A36 that is followed. Okay. So there you will find what is the energy value which is required. So in SA20, SA or A20, you will find the table also for the minimum energy value which is required. And also procedure, how you'll be conducting that impact testing by using A370, which is a common for even ASM. So A370 and A20 is what we follow. In ASME, there is additional impact testing, testing clauses and there is a different value okay, which has to be followed okay, apart from A20. But here there is no separate chart or figure directly follow A20. This uh, linear equation, if you don't want to follow the curves or you want to get exact value, then you can follow the equation. Okay, it's just a replacement, any one of it you can do. Either you can follow the graph or you can follow the equation for finding the MDMT value. You may have sheets, you can use sheets. There are some requirement related to that. Structural shape, if you are following, A36 again, you can use. Piping and forgings. You have 53, A53, which is mainly used for handrails, normally not for pressure part. Pressure part we typically follow 106. 333, when you use 333 for nozzles, when you use A333 LTCS, low temperature surface, because it has very good impact property. Forgings, you can use 105, very common, and then 181. This is also very common. Again, 350. When you'll be using forging of 350, again LTCS in low temperature because it has very good impact properties. Great. Okay. So flanges and boltings, you can follow the normal standards like B16.5 is used for flanges. For sizes lesser than 24 inch more than that you'll be following 16.47 series b boltings you can follow 193 b7 for flange boltings and 194 grade 2h for the nuts so bolt and nuts threading and all you can follow this a single standards for bolting which are for structural purpose like foundation You'll be using 307. That is more preferred one. 193 also you can use. That will be a little bit costlier, but it has good strength. Okay, so if you are able to give 193, the 193 then also permitted. For in-depth training and to learn more about these courses, register with the link in the description.